Hi, it's Kantex here with the continuing series of videos tracking the building of Linux from scratch 1.0 to the latest version. So in the previous series of videos got to Linux from scratch 6.3 and there's a passing mention of 64-bit in 6.3. And I thought to myself, this might be a good time to move on to um, 64-bit, but wasn't sure how that would be done. I wasn't particularly sure that Linux from scratch could do it by itself. Um, and sure enough, when I looked into it further, it, it couldn't be. It's either 32-bit um, or 64-bit, and it's all based around what you boot with. So if you boot with a 32-bit system, host system, you'll get a 32-bit Linux from scratch and of course same for 64-bit. If you boot from 64-bit, you'll end up with a 64-bit Linux, Linux from scratch. So I looked at cross Linux from scratch and as it turned out, I didn't know this at all. Um, apparently it was the reason why cross Linux from scratch was set up was to um, aid moving from 32-bit to 64-bit in Linux from scratch. So that was um, a nice little discovery. Um, serendipity, if you like. Um, and another um, good thing that I found out, so it was a coincidence really, um, was that the Linux from scratch that I was going to target would have been 7.7, .7, um, which was dated around... Uh, 2014, 2015, I think it was. Um, and it turns out that Cross Linux from scratch, the last stable release, which was or is 3.0.0, .0, um, was dated 18th of October 2014. So it kind of tied up with the Linux from scratch 7.7 .7 that I was targeting. It's around the same period. In actual fact, looking at the Linux from scratch package versions and comparing them with cross Linux from scratch, um, it seems that cross Linux from scratch 3.0.0 .0 lies roughly between Linux from scratch 7.5 and 7.6. It's probably closer to 7.5. There's more packages uh, in common with 7.5 than there are with 7.6, but there are some that are shared with 7.6. So it all kind of um, uh, fell into place as far as that's concerned. Um, and that was, um, as I say, my idea to go to 64-bit now rather than later on and possibly get into the situation where I'm on a modern machine running 32-bit and something not working. For example, maybe I need to um, boot with EFI, but uh, there are difficulties with booting EFI from 32-bit. It's not officially supported, although um, it can work in certain circumstances, depending on the hardware. So, yeah, my idea was because, as, um, as I say, 6.3, got a passing mention about 64-bit. I thought if I could go to 64-bit as soon as possible, um, that would be advantageous for the future versions of Linux from scratch, which I'll be building, which hopefully are not too many. As I say, this gets to 7.5, which is around 2014, um, or rather the equivalent of 7.5. So I'm hoping I'm not going to have too many more, maybe two or three more versions um, to, to complete this huge project. Um, <clears throat> so... Cross Linux from scratch, as it suggests, it cross compiles Linux from scratch to enable us to go from 32 bit to 64 bit. Um, there are also a lot of other permutations you can do uh, within that version. So if you look at the screen, you can see that I've got the home page up for cross Linux from scratch, uh, gives you some information. Um, of particular interest are the download links, which will take you to this link. The reason why I've got these tabs loaded already is because the website's quite slow. I don't know if it's like hosted on a little Raspberry Pi or something, but it takes quite a long while for the pages to load. So, so yeah, th this is the download page, which describes how to get the book, which I'll be showing you something about that in a moment. Uh, it tells you the git commands there to fetch the book. 
Um, there's also links there which take you to patches you can download uh, and the packages as well. So you'll probably want to visit that to um, download the files. Um, having said that, when you download from Git, you get a couple of extra directories. One of which it has actually got the patches in, and the other one is some scripts, which I don't know what they're to do with exactly. They're not needed um, at all. And I'll say they're not needed because when you download the book, all you're downloading is the XML files that make the book up, and you have to run some commands to um, build the book if you want to read it offline. If you want to read it online, then as I say, there is a link from here to read. It takes you to this page, and then you can go into these links and just read it online. Um, there is a cross BLFS which I did I wasn't aware of until I actually finished my test run of building cross Linux from scratch 3.0.0. .0 .0. Um, but having looked at it, I'm not going to use it because there's no well, there are obviously versions of files on there, but there's no mention as to what date they are or what version of cross Linux from scratch they're appropriate to. Um, so I was a little bit wary of that. You get you get this um, community wiki page for building the packages. So, for example, look, you see I went to open SSL there, um, and although it mentions obviously what package version you're going to download and some patches, there's no confirmation as to what version of Cross Linux from scratch this will work on. I can assume I only assume it will work on the latest stable, but as I got things working when I was building without using this, I thought I'd stick with what I've already worked out um, rather than trying to have a go at this and potentially get lost down a rabbit hole with that. So I won't be using the cross beyond Linux from scratch at all. So I'll get rid of that. Um, yeah. So as I say, you can read this online. I prefer to read things locally for two reasons. A, I'm not hitting the servers so often, but um, the main reason for me is my internet's not particularly reliable. Um, so it's more convenient for me to have the um, packages and books locally ready to use. Um, so what I need to show you is how to build the book. Now, um, because I had, had this on my web server, which is the Pentium Pro 200, I and, and I had the packages available to build the book, um, I just built it on there, and I was surprised how long it took. It took two hours to build the book. It's not just one book, actually. It's several books, because as you'll see, there's, um, and as I've already mentioned, there's several permutations of cross Linux from scratch. It's not just Intel 32-bit, 64-bit, or 64-bit, 32-bit. There are actually other architectures like MIPS and Spark, I think, uh, and then the 32-bit and 64-bit variants of those architectures as well. So you've got quite a choice. You could go from, say, a 64-bit Spark to a 32-bit Intel, for example, if you wanted to, or a 32-bit MIPS to a 64-bit Intel and so on. Um, so this is the... Um, git um, uh, download that I've actually tied up so it will look slightly different to the download package as I said the download package um, where is it yeah if you go to if you download the git repository as I say you'll end up with more than the book so when I extract this um, which as I say is a copy of the uh, repository I've already downloaded I've just tied it up uh, as you can see there's a couple of other directories there there's a directory with patches in Oops. so you can see there's all the patches required by the project and then there's a directory called scripts, which says it's got some scripts here. I'm not sure what they're for, um, but you don't need them anyway. Um, everything you need is in the book directory. And there's a helpful um, readme file there. I 
Right, let's uh, click bash going, I think. Um, let's read. And it tells you how to run the command to actually create the books and what, you know, depending on what format you want. So if you want the books um, as they're normal with the individual chapters, you run that command. If you want all the books in one single file, you run that command. If you just want to put them out to a text file, you run that command. And if you want to produce a PDF file, you can just run that command. There are some caveats though, because if you read the install um, file, it will show you the dependencies you need. So there are some packages you need. So to convert from XML to HTML, you need all these packages. Now, as I say, when I um, built the book on the Pentium Pro, it had all of these packages except for HTML tidy. And it did complain about HTML tidy missing, but it did actually complete building and I've used those that that book that I created to test run this and there's no no problems with it so I can only assume that's just something to literally tidy up the HTML <clears throat> uh, maybe get rid of white spaces or um, unnecessary code in the HTML I don't know unnecessary markup um, if you want to convert to TXT you need links obviously because links was run with the dump command to produce a text output and if you want to produce PDF, you need um, a Java development kit as well as FOP and JAI. Um, so those demands are a little bit more involved because um, I'm sure they'll have dependencies by themselves. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to run it, but not on the Pentium Pro because it would just sit there doing nothing. Um, as I say, it took two hours. However, on, on this machine... Um, I haven't got some of the packages, so it will fail, but I can at least show you what to do. So if I do make base the equals, and then you give it a directory you want to um, dump the uh, book into the output. So if I put, say, the root of this, so if I put in um, book rendered, for example, That will start off, you see it starts off validating, um, but as I say, it, as you can see it fails because I haven't got an XSLT processor by the looks of it, that library is missing. Um, so it, I doubt it will have, it will have um, actually created anything. Oh, it's created a render directory, okay. Let's see what's in there. All oh, right, so it has started to do some stuff, but basically, yeah, the Pentium Pro took two hours. I imagine a machine that's a few years old is going to take even five or ten minutes, maybe. Um, and a modern machine might take a minute or two. Um, so there's something to bear in mind if you do build your own book, that it may take some time. So that's how to build the book. I'll get rid of these. I don't think I need these anymore. So as you can see, I've got the book here. These are the um, directories you've just seen. It ends up in render. And because I created the XHTML, the HTML version, that's where the book will be. And there you can see the um, front page of the book. And this is what I will be working from. And also, as you can see, you can um, move to, what's that, 12 different versions of cross from scratch different architectures.